Welcome to this tutorial on digital signals. Before we start, and to ensure there is no confusion, I will be referring to all non-optical digital signals as digital electrical or coaxial. Digital audio signals consist of a data stream that is represented by binary code. Now they cannot be said to be audible until they're converted back to a line level electrical signal. The process of converting a line level electrical signal into a digital one is called analog to digital conversion. And unsurprisingly, the process of converting the digital signal back to line level is called digital to analog conversion. There are four primary digital audio signal types used in the home and project studio. They are ADAT light pipe optical, carrying between two and eight channels, SPDIF optical, carrying a stereo pair, AES3 electrical, carrying two channels, and SPDIF coaxial, an electrical version of SPDIF optical. Digital audio signals can be divided into two categories, optical and electrical. Optical signals are transmitted with fibre optic toslink leads. The signal is sent as light and is therefore inaudible until converted by a receiving device. They are commonly used to send or receive one of two optical signal formats. The first format, known as ADAT light pipe, can carry up to eight channels of audio in a single data stream. It is used for a wide variety of professional applications, such as connecting a digital mixing desk to a door via an audio interface. Another popular application is for connecting multi-channel analogue to digital converters to audio interfaces. This is an eight-channel analogue to digital converter, which can be fed with any line level signal. Its ADAT light pipe output is connected to an audio interface from which signals can be sent to a door to be recorded. The second optical format, known as SPDIF optical, carries a stereo pair and because it was designed to interconnect hi-fi devices, can be found on CD players and digital amplifiers. Although its origins were in consumer electronics, SPDIF quality is perfectly acceptable for professional applications and there is no obvious quality difference between it and a professional digital audio format. It has been adopted by many manufacturers as an affordable way of enabling digital interconnection on their devices. The Toslink format was invented by Japanese hi-fi manufacturer Toshiba to enable digital connection of their CD players and digital amplifiers, but today it is used for two other common digital optical signal formats. The first is ADAT, invented by Alesis to allow them to connect their revolutionary digital 8-track tape recorders to digital mixing desks. They were revolutionary in the 1980s. And the second was a collaboration between Sony and Philips to create an optical version of their coaxial SPDIF format. Digital electrical signals are computer level and to all intents and purposes inaudible. Too weak to drive a loudspeaker or headphone, even if you could hear one, you would not hear the encoded sound wave, just the digital chatter of the binary code. There are two common electrical formats for digital audio. AES3 is widely used for professional applications, in particular the digital interconnection of two-track recorders and outboard processors to digital mixing desks and audio interfaces. AES3 signals are balanced, two-channel or stereo and require a three-core cable and connector. This is a microphone preamplifier with a built-in analog to digital converter and the digital signal is sent to an audio interface via an AES3 lead. The second format is SPDIF coaxial which is an electrical version of SPDIF optical. Due to its origins as a consumer hi-fi interconnect SPDIF coaxial is a lower level unbalanced version of AES3 but in all other respects quality is identical. SPDIF ADAT and AES3 are not the only formats available. 
There are others, but they are not commonly used in home and project studios. Nevertheless, it's worth saying something about MADI. Essentially, MADI is a multi-channel version of AES-3, capable of 28, 56 or 64 channels over a single BNC coaxial or fibre optic connector. Cables can be hundreds of metres long, so it has found favour in broadcast, live sound and large studio complex installations. MADI does not carry a word clock signal, so a separate BNC sync connection must be used. Optical, coaxial and AES digital audio leads are all limited to relatively short lengths of between several metres and several tens of metres. But for the home and project studio this is not normally an issue. If greater lengths are needed, then MADI or audio over IP can be used. Digital computer level signals are actually pulse waves turning on and off to represent ones and zeros. In raw unconverted form they can be amplified to audible line level if they need to be sent down an analog audio cable. Examples are phone modems and analog SEMTI synchronization signals. Essentially a computer level signal is amplified to allow it to be transmitted over a phone line or recorded by an audio recorder such as a multi-track tape machine. Pulse waves are also created at audio level by synthesizers and are a useful waveform for creating a whole range of sounds. The quality of digital audio is defined by three primary factors. They are sample rate, word length and whether the signal has been compressed or not and if so by how much. In the project and home studio, most owners record, process and mix using 44.1 or 48 kHz sample rate, 24-bit word length and uncompressed AIF or WAV files. The ADAT, AES and SPDIF formats all allow for elevated sample rates, typically 96 kHz. But because for many the quality improvement is negligible, and the burden on CPUs and hard disks is doubled, they are rarely used in the project and home studio. These modes are called SMUX and dual wire. SPDIF coaxial signals can easily be converted to optical with a device such as this. And this can be useful if you have two devices, one of which has a coaxial connection and the other an optical connection. In this tutorial we have talked about four primary types of digital audio signal. An interconnected system can utilise all these signal types simultaneously, providing they share the same sample weight. It is also good practice to set them all to a 24-bit word length. The script for this tutorial, with accompanying screenshots, can be found at projectstudiohandbook.com. And finally, Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel or at the website to get instant notification of new videos as they are uploaded. And please do click on the ads of interest to you. We're a free resource and they help to pay our costs. Thanks very much for watching.